right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pub Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm delighted to welcome back David Meerman Scott, who is unbelievably has another new book coming out. <laughs> er, er, I think early in 2020, is that right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and this book, I think, uh, is different than David's other best selling books that have been translated across the globe. and. Uh, David is known as like a, a, a one of the gurus of, of sales and marketing. But this one you wrote with your daughter, right? I did, yeah. My daughter, she's 26 years old now, and we decided to write it together. And you're right, it is a departure for me um, uh, on a, in a lot of levels. Uh, I'm best known for a book called The New Rules of Marketing and PR, yeah. which was really the first book to talk about what we now call either social media marketing, mm -hmm. or, uh, inbound marketing, whatever term you want to use. And what I realized, and this may sound like hearsay, but, um, is that there's been too much superficial online communications out there. People are doubling down on social channels. It's become polarizing, not just from the political climate, but other things happening out there as well. And you don't even know if you're communicating with a robot sometimes. Yeah. So... It's not going away. Online is still here to stay in a huge way. It's still critically mm -hmm. important. But I think the pendulum has swung too far in the yeah. direction of superficial online communications when people are looking for a true human connection. So I think the pendulum is about to swing back to a yeah. true human connection. And that's um, this idea of fans. When you're a fan mm -hmm. of something, it's utterly human. And so, yeah, yes, yeah. I wrote this one with my daughter. It was really fun. Yeah, and the book is called Fanocracy, uh, Turning Fans into Customers and Customers into Fans. And what, and what I, I like about what you just said, David, is I completely agree. I think communication has gotten very superficial and, and it's become rote, right? It's kind of yeah. like people, you know, companies, everybody thinks these are, oh, you've got to have a blog, you've got to have YouTube videos, you've got to have nurture campaigns, you've got to have Instagram, you've got to have everything. And they're just bombarding people. And you're right. You don't know sometimes now whether you're communi communicating with a bot. And to be honest, there's a that's an interesting, almost ethical uh, uh, angle to that is, should you know, if you're communicating with a bot, yeah, should the company know. let you know it's a bot? I don't know. That's a really interesting question. Um, and as we were digging into this, you know, I was thinking to myself, on one hand, I'm frustrated with all this inbound online mm -hmm. social and i still love it i, mean, I still participate mm -hmm. every day in sure. social mm -hmm. media but but it just seems like an end, endless tidal wave at the same time i recognize that the things that i love like going to rock concerts for example mm -hmm. i've been to 700 and i think it's 89 now live concerts right. uh and i've been doing it since i was age 15 my best friends are going to live concerts mm -hmm. And I was saying to my daughter, Reiko, you know, what is it with me and live music? I'm like geeking out about it. Every month yeah. I go to live music. My best friends go to live music. And she said, I know, I I love Harry Potter. I've got the things I <laughs> geek out about. And, yeah. not, and not only has Reiko read every book multiple times, seen mm -hmm. each movie multiple times, gone to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando, gone to the studio in London, but she wrote a 90,000 word alternative ending to the Harry Potter series where wow. Draco Malfoy is a spy for the Order of the Phoenix and put it on a <laughs> fan fiction site for people to download for free. You know, we are geeks. Every single yeah person you're a geek john i'm a geek we all geek out about something <laughs> so on one hand there's all this superficial stuff going on. on the other hand we're passionate about things and i think we can bring i think we can bring that passion to our work and i think yeah. we can create what i call a fanocracy which is having people eager to do business with you rather than you trying to just you know turn them into something in your pipeline yeah. And I think that, as you say, I think the pendulum is swinging and I think there's a craving now for that. I think people want to be, you know, treated as humans. People want to have more of a connection. I mean, like you said, um, you know, with with live music and I think you I was reading uh, 
your stats, what's it, 165, 175 Grateful Dead concerts? Oh, it's a ridiculous dead. number, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's actually 75 um, Grateful uh, yeah. Dead concerts. And, yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's nutty, but, but we all have the things we mm-hmm. dig into. You know, for some people, it's running marathons. For other mm-hmm. people, it's bird watching. For other people, you know, it's, 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 it's the sporting team that they love or the yeah. sport that they participate in. And uh, we all have those passions. So what makes you, so, okay, so we have those about the things that we love, kind of we're passionate about, you know, music or sports or whatever it is, or, you know, Harry Potter, things like that. How does a company rise above all of the superficial noise and be be able to kind of project enough of an auth- enough authenticity that people want to connect with that company in a way that they would want to connect with you know their favorite sports team yeah so what we realized and i mean we've been doing the research now for five years what we realized Uh, is that the simple answer the the simple answer is that people want a true human connection mm -hmm. they want a true human connection to the people who work at the companies that they want to do business with and sometimes that human connection you know can be really simple but that's what they want and so what that means is that first of all showcasing what you're passionate about is a start you know all business all the time doesn't work so well and so on social media when you share the things that you're passionate about it can be a really interesting way to to be able to work with your customers so that's a simple response Mm -hmm. but when we dig deeper um, we looked at actually the neuroscience about how people become fans of something Mm. and it turns out there's a concept in neuroscience around proximity it's the idea that the closer you get to someone the more powerful the human emotion the closer you get to someone the more powerful the human emotion and neuroscience tells us there's four zones of influence the first zone is called public space. It's further than 20 feet away from somebody else. And we hear humans don't pay too much attention to people who are that far away from us. Uh, But it's hardwired into our brains to pay attention when people get inside of 20 feet. So inside Mm. of 20 feet to about four feet is called social space. When you walk into a crowded room, you can't help that you scan the room. Is there Mm -hmm. a friend here? Is there a foe here? Is there a potential mate here? Is your Your ancient brain makes you do that. Um, And then there's personal space. That's a foot and a half to four feet away. That's cocktail party distance. If somebody is in your social, in your personal space and it's a good relationship, you trust them. That's an incredibly powerful relationship in a positive way. If you don't trust them and you feel threatened, it's an incredibly powerful relationship in a negative way. So when you get on a crowded elevator, you feel nervous when you're Mm -hmm. with someone you trust you feel great so what that means simply is that when the more opportunities that you can get in business to get in the social and personal space of your customers the better Mm -hmm. so it means that a, a a conference where you invite your customers it means going out Uh, in the old fashioned way and meeting them. It means uh, being able to, um, to, to have customers meet with customers as well. Uh, All of these things are adding to building fans. Yeah, and it's interesting because, and like you said about this idea of proximity and connection, and, and it's funny because if you think about it over the last number of years, some companies have done a great job with of removing people from the equation, right? Putting as many barriers in place. And how often have you heard somebody say, "Oh, well, I finally got through to this person, and she gave me her name and her extension, and I can call her." And they're like, so excited that somebody from the <laughs> yeah. company actually just took an interest. So right. the bars, the bars set pretty low, right? It is. It is. It, it, you're absolutely right. And that it turns out that this isn't just something that we are saying. It mm-hmm. comes from neuroscience. It's hardwired into us. Um, and there's another aspect that's really interesting, and that is that 
there's something called mirror neurons, something else coming from neuroscience, that when we do something, our brain fires. Right. But when we see someone do the same thing, how, your brain will fire too. So this is lemon water. There's water mm -hmm. with, a, I squeezed a bunch of lemons in here. I'm going to take right. a taste. Oh my gosh, it, it makes my eyes close, my <laughs> mouth puckers up, I get, I get my saliva starts to run, I, I can't help myself, but my, my face scrunches. And I'll bet that you might have felt a little bit of that too. Yeah, no, for sure, because exactly, because I think, you know, the minute I thought, oh, that's got to be bitter, right? And you, yeah. you, you manifested, you know, the bitterness of it. And, and what's, here's what's cool about this idea of mirror neurons. Again, hardwired into us, it's, mm -hmm. it's our ancient brains at work. Um, when we are doing what you and I are doing right this moment, mm -hmm. we are doing a virtual proximity to one another. We right. are in each other's personal space, but it's virtual. You're in a mm -hmm. different part of the world than I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, yet, because of the way we're framing these video chat, um, we are actually having a conversation and we are relating to the people who are watching us in the same way. So it mm -hmm. turns out that to build fans in a virtual way, it's a matter of more... Um, smart use of video, which is exactly yeah. what you're doing right now with me mm -hmm. and with our audience. It's the use of photographs. You know, the, the humble selfie is important because it shows that proximity to another mm -hmm. human being. Um, and so these things are all, are all ways that businesses of any kind can help to develop fans, and that comes from neuroscience. Yeah, and I think you're you're totally right. Is that uh, that anybody in say? I mean, there's a lot more virtual meetings going on and you know, demos over the web and all of that kind of stuff. But if you switch on your camera, even if you only switch it on at the beginning, because you know some people say, well, you know, then it screws up the demo with bandwidth. But if you take those few moments at the beginning, switch on your camera and engage with the other person and encourage them to do the same, you get that proximity that we're uh, we're talking about right now yeah that's exactly right and in my case uh, you know over my shoulder yeah. is a grateful dead logo <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and um, you know that's that's me you know that's <laughs> celebrating who i am and you know i've had i've had conversations with people and they see the logo and then we geek out about the grateful dead mm -hmm. for 10 minutes rather than doing real work but guess <laughs> what geeking out with someone in a business setting about what you're a fan of um, is absolutely a positive way to do business. Um, so, you know, we've spent a lot of time digging into what builds, we call it a fanocracy, but building people who become fans of a business, fans of a person, fans of ideas. And um, there's a bunch of prescriptions for it. Um, this one of proximity comes from neuroscience, but there's a number of different other ones that we've identified. And there are a whole bunch of companies that are doing a fabulous job at developing fans in surprising industries you know so what, software and um and batteries and surfboards and all kinds of things no no ab absolutely and i think but it was funny you mentioned something there i just wanted to touch on again and this idea of rediscovering like we just you're a lot of what you were saying about neuroscience you're saying these are very ancient uh, things so it's like read it's it's almost like what you're what you're talking about here is rediscovering how to be human right mm. in many ways yeah yeah it is and um and and that's that was incredibly surprising to me as mm. i started this project 5 years ago um, and invited my daughter, um, Reiko, to become a part of the project. She has different fandoms than I do. She's obviously a woman. She's a different generation, obviously. Um, she's mixed race. She's neuroscience degree, so she's coming at it from the scientific right. perspective. Um, and I thought we would be going down a completely different path five years ago, but we really focused on this idea of true humanity. And that is absolutely what's at the center of a fandom because we, when we are together with like-minded people, mm -hmm. so people who share the same passions that we have, we're the happiest that we ever are. Yeah. So, you know, I, I love going to rock concerts, but it's because my friends go with me. I, and right. Reiko loves Harry Potter, but it's because her friends love Harry Potter too. And so it is a true human connection. And I think, you know, for many, 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 many centuries, humans had that connection 
And recently we've been sort of divorced from it for a variety of reasons. You know, the way we live, the whole rise mm -hmm. of social media and online marketing, which is not going away and is still important. Um, but any organization that can get back to being human, I think has potential to do really well because they'll grow fans. Yeah, I no, I couldn't agree more because uh, I call it the disconnected, uh, connected world we live in. Mm. Because the more we're connected, the more we're almost becoming disconnected because these devices are getting in the way. Yeah, and then I think an interesting one, and I have nothing against. Uh, I, I sometimes look on Nextdoor because that mm -hmm. Nextdoor.com that app because right, somebody yeah. asked me to join it. But the thing that bothers me about it is I'm just sometimes I look at the discussions and the things that are going on and I just think you would never talk to each other in person like this, right? Yeah. You know, because you inevitably right. get, you know, a little bit of ranting going on. And I'm thinking, you know, that person you're ranting at is probably a few doors up from you. And if you right. went out your front door and walked up there and actually had a conversation, right. you'd probably find like you have more in common and maybe you wouldn't be getting so wound up. Yeah, I know, I know. And 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 the other one, I'm not going to talk about politics, but the sure. other thing, the you know, politics is really interesting yeah. and um over the last um about six months or so, I live in the Boston area and I live mm -hmm. 20 miles from New Hampshire. I've gone right. to 22 US presidential candidate events wow. and had an opportunity to have um, a, an interaction with every one of those candidates. And I've asked everyone a simple question, what are they a fan of? And uh, have it all on video, which I'm gonna be releasing at some Excellent. point. But, but what's interesting about that is these people can can feel so angry and mean and nasty and attacking their rivals mm -hmm. and you see them on the debate stage and they're like people that you don't want to, to pay attention to but in person they're all interesting people they all are fans of something they're all human beings who want to make connections and i think the more we can do that the better off we are and also it makes for a better life you know yes, when when we're enjoying ourselves and being with people who we love and people who share the same passions as we do and doing business with people who we want to do business with rather than just like a, you know chasing the next dollar i think is incredibly powerful way to, to to live life no i couldn't agree more and i think if you obviously if if your customers are turning into fans of yours then it's got to be a positive and it's got to be uplifting both for them and for you so yeah. it's a you know you're both getting something out of this as opposed to yeah i mean i think this is this is a great message particularly in a world that seems to be getting increasingly attracted by negativity, it's nice to have some positive messaging coming out. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that uh, that vote of confidence because it's been it was a real eye opening to write um, and research, and also having done it with my daughter to make sure we get the millennial generation in there. <laughs> um, and um, and it and it it really is something that I think has. Uh, tremendous potential for organizations who adopt this idea of fan yeah. Well, I couldn't agree more and I look forward to reading it. So it's uh, out in 2020, you said? Yeah, January 2020. And um, I'm really psyched for it. Yeah. And right now, if you want to, I see you have a free chapter and you have the website Fanocracy. Yep, absolutely. Fanocracy.com. And I'm DM Scott on social media. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I said, uh, if you go to Fanocracy, you can actually learn more about, uh, you know, David and Rico's concept and you can read the first chapter. And in fact, it's a very attractive looking cover, too. I like it. <laughs> yeah, boy, we, we spent a year on the title and about six months on the cover. And I think we nailed okay. both of them, if I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. Well, listen, David, it's been a pleasure, as usual, talking with you. And hopefully maybe you come back uh, early next year once the Love book you. is out and start telling me a little bit about the impact pack it's having. I'd love to do that. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.